the ten laws of narcissistic possession. You belong to us. The narcissistic mindset is that every victim, every victim in our fuel matrix belongs to us. You are our possessions. We objectify you. Less from mid-range narcissists do this in the unconscious, not realizing this is what is happening, but their treatment of you demonstrates that you are objectified and that you are seen as a possession. Greater narcissists and the ultra are aware that we do this. You are, in effect, our possessions over which we assert control. We play with you, utilize you for our purposes. And as a consequence of this mindset, there are ten laws which are applicable to viewing you as our possessions. Whether you are the stranger who sells us a daily newspaper, whether you are a long-standing friend, or whether you are the intimate partner primary source, the spouse, the boyfriend, the girlfriend, the partner. All of you, tertiary, secondary and primary sources, are within our fuel matrices and therefore you are our possessions. These are the ten laws which are applicable to the concept of narcissistic possession. Number one, you belong to me. I own you. From the moment I first engaged with you, you became mine. That is the unwritten contract that forms between you and me. I engulf you, I possess you, and I subsume your identity into mine. I do not actually recognize you as someone who is separate and distinct from me with your own hopes and fears and desires. You have been plugged into me from the start. You are my appliance which is there to provide me with fuel, obey me and accede to my commands. You are an asset which I can draw on as often as I wish. This mindset is what governs the entirety of our relationship and is what is behind so much of what I do and say to you. By understanding that this is how I actually view you in relation to me, you will realize that once I have begun to ensnare you, the concept of you being separate evaporates and you become part of me. Two, what is yours is mine. As part of this unwritten contract, I immediately take power, custody and control of everything which you own. Your money, if I choose, is mine to spend. Your friends become my friends and always were, and therefore ripe for recruitment into the ranks of my coterie. Your house is my house, where I shall install myself before you know it, using your utilities freely, although never paying for them. That sense of entitlement is rampant. It is not your car, it is my car now. I recognize no boundaries, and therefore you will find that your possessions will always be sequestrated for my use. You are no longer allowed to own anything in your own right. From the cake that you have saved for later, to your shower gel, I will take it and use it. This sense of entitlement extends beyond the material. I will take your dignity, your sanity, and your self-esteem also. I have no use for those things. They cannot serve me in any way, but I will take them all the same. I am an asset stripper, and you will be stripped to the bone. Three, bl blame belongs to you. I am never at fault. I am never responsible, and I am never accountable. Culpability and I are not bedfellows. I escape liability for anything and everything that I do, and instead, the blame will always rest with you, even if you have done nothing wrong. I will pin the blame on you, because from my perspective, you have always done something wrong, and therefore this allows me to assert control over you, draw fuel from you, and denigrate you. If I have forgotten to remove something from the cooker, it is your fault because you did not remind me. If I forget to pay a parking ticket on time, it is your fault because you distracted me. 
if I forget an anniversary, it is your fault. Each and every mishap, failure and problem which arises will always be attributed to you because I cannot be held to account because to do so would be to threaten my control over you. 4. I take what I want from whomsoever that I choose. I walk this world as a colossus and it is my right to do as I please. I will take whatever my eye rests on as I am entitled to do so. I will steal because if I can, I will. If I want something, I will take it. I will take the credit for achievements when they belong to someone else. I will pinch the partner of a friend because I want her in my bed and not his. I will park my car where I like and I am not to suffer any consequence. I will borrow from neighbours and never return anything. It is my right to take and you must never challenge or criticise me for exercising this right because after all, blame belongs to you. 6. What is mine stays mine. All resources that are mine remain mine and are for my exclusive use. I do not lend anything to anybody. They should go and buy their own. I will not share unless ultimately it serves a purpose. I will stockpile money secretly, notwithstanding that we apparently have a joint account. I have my own shelf inside the fridge for my food and nobody else is to touch it. Nobody is allowed to sit in my favourite chair, not even when I'm not there. Nobody is to play my music or read my books. They are not for you, they are for me. My friends are my friends. Of course they will pretend to like you, purely for the sake of appearance, but they will never actually be your friends. Anything that is mine, even if I were to lend it to you, always remains my possession. 7. I go where I please. I own the right to go anywhere that I like. I am not to be stopped or questioned as to where I am going or where I have been. I move in between and through an unstoppable force as a consequence of my vast sense of entitlement. I walk through doorways marked private. I attend meetings which I have not been invited. I will turn up at your social occasions even though I was not asked to at attend. Indeed, even when I am told not to attend, I will still appear. I will step over the threshold, vault the red rope and penetrate all areas. Because my sense of entitlement and need to control dictates, I must always know what is going on. Besides, my presence is such that I am always welcome. Who would not want someone as brilliant as I with them? I am access or areas. 8. I own the spotlight. The spotlight must be trained on me at all times as it belongs to me. It is for my use to highlight how interesting, witty and successful I am. It lights up my podium where I stand elevated and superior and woe betide you should you try to point it anywhere else. You must never interfere with my ownership of the spotlight, for to do so will invite my fury at your transgression. It is a device that must be aimed at me, so that the world is always to see me, so that I can receive the adoration for which I am entirely entitled to. 9. I owe you nothing. I owe you nothing because in the beginning I gave you everything. It does not matter that since you have given me all of your love, your affection, your time, your money, your dignity and your will to live, you can festoon me with gifts, run around after me, nurse me, pleasure me, support and soothe me, but this is what you ought to be doing as I am entitled to be treated in this manner. I have no sense of needing to reciprocate. Someone as high-born as I need not deign to fawn over you. Not any more. Not once I have captured you and bound you tight to me. You belong to me. You are nothing without me. Worthless and pathetic. And therefore, I owe you nothing, despite the fact that you gave me everything. Number 10. You belong to me. I thought I would remind you of this fact. It would not do to forget that now, would it? What's that? Number five. Of course there is a fifth rule. I've already told you what it is. 
You are imagining things again. I own the right to cause you to doubt yourself. I own your mind. <laughs>